and I bought one of them big gigantic boxes, family size, of snark. And I thought I had enough snark to do this show all day, and I am now out of snark. See, step seven is speak truth to power. You're going to be like Toto in The Wizard of Oz and yank the curtain away from the wizard for the world to see. And I'm not sure right now that you can do that, that you can speak to the power and keep out of prison. Never mind, keep a day job. We've all seen how quickly the crackdown came on Occupy. For less than a year old, we've got a martyr. I don't think Scott Olson's going to be the last one. And this time it's really different because this time, maybe for the first time in American history, the 1% don't give a wet, sloppy, spegma filled flying fuck what any of us think of them. Because they've got the 99% of China and the 99% of India. And those are people who are going to work for wages at my job that wouldn't cover my bar tab. And I don't think you can just keep your head down and hope everything goes all right. Because I think we're facing an awful summer. And it's like the Indian poet read. The Indian poet who wrote, Civilization is only three meals deep. And I think we just might find that out this summer. At the same time, I don't think you can do everything else I'm talking about here and have it work unless somebody speaks truth to power. And I'm really sorry about that because it's going to be really hard. But if you believe what Martin Luther King said when he said that the universe leans towards justice, and if you believe that an empire built on lies cannot last, and if you believe that we're all part of a larger consciousness and we have an obligation to each other to call out liars and bullies, then one way or the other we've all got to find a way to speak truth to power. Okay, step eight. You're gonna go to street demonstrations and march your fucking butt off. Now I know I said at the beginning that street demonstrations do not change the world and that is absolutely true. But you don't go to a street demonstration because you think it's gonna bring down the empire. You go to a street demonstration because after spending a year being in your office, being the only guy who thinks George Bush is a goddamn war criminal, it's nice to meet 8,000 people who agree with you. Yeah. Woo -hoo! And you are going to go to that street demonstration, and you're going to meet people who will help you figure out ways to stop the empire that I can't even think of. Okay, we're at step nine. <laughs> step nine, learn to have fun. Look, no empire ever lasts forever. And you need to keep that in mind when the tear gas is flying and you're wearing plastic handcuffs. I'm not trying to minimize what's involved here, but you're gonna need to keep a sense of humor in the coming months. Because as I said at the beginning, bringing down an empire is not a sprint, it is a marathon. And we all know that not everybody who begins a marathon <coughs> can get to the finish line. And my voice is shot now, so we're going to do people's mic. Mic check! Mic check! Mic check! Mic check! Mic check! Mic check! That's most of my presentation. That's most of my presentation. I also do weddings, bar mitzvahs, and covered dish events. I also do weddings, bar mitzvahs, and covered dish events. I have a book coming out. I have a book coming out. The Tubby Balding Radical's Guide <laughs> to Diet, Exercise, and Revolution, yo. Diet, Exercise, and Revolution, yo. It'll be on Amazon as soon as I write it. It'll be on Amazon as soon as I write it. If we wake up tomorrow, if we wake up tomorrow, and the empire is falling, and the empire is falling, we're meeting here, bring beer. We're meeting here, bring beer. Pache Salam Shalom. Pache Salam Shalom. Right back at you, thank you.